I'm excited because we are in our Beyond the Blessing series. If you missed the first two weeks, I want to encourage you, go back, watch week one. Uh, my wife, Jackie, she brought the heat week one. It was amazing. A smattering of clapter. Uh, I'm going to say it one more time. Jackie brought the heat week one. Okay. It was better. It was a little bit better. Uh, last week, I did an interview with Dr. Scott Hagen. It was amazing. You can go back to our YouTube channel. Check it out. We believe it will encourage you and help you. For week three, we're going to be jumping in in just a moment. I do want to give a shout out. We've got a gentleman who is a Hope City-sponsored cowboy named Anthony Thomas. Uh, give it up for Anthony. And Anthony has made it to the semifinals in the Houston rodeo, y'all. Bareback Bronco riding. When I watch him ride, I literally text my chiropractor. I'm like, I'm going to need an adjustment. It's unbelievable. Uh, he rides next Thursday. Say next Thursday, the 17th. I think Hope, Hope City should re represent. Show up, show off, shout him down, and show up next Thursday at the rodeo. How many of you guys have gone to the rodeo? You're excited about the rodeo? Okay, if you're watching online, you don't have any idea what we're talking about. Come join us next year at the Houston Rodeo. Uh, I like the rodeo myself. Uh, I've been, we've been multiple nights. I have a little bit of a strategy. I've gained upwards of between seven and nine pounds of rodeo weight. Uh, and I have a strategy I'm gonna let you guys in on a little bit before we jump into the word today. Uh, so what I do is as soon as I get there, after we park, before we even go down to our seats, uh, I go and I get what I feel like is the Lord's will. It's a loaded brisket potato. Uh, if you have not experienced it, amen, like it's, it's all the glory and everything. God just touches it and says it, it is blessed. And then I, and I, and I run parallel in the other hand with a loaded brisket nachos. Yes, uh, it's a team lift effort. I'm feeding for four people. I'm trying to gain weight for a movie role. Amen. It's a, it's a joke. Uh, and then I wash it down with cotton candy. Come on, rodeo life. Uh, how many guys have eaten the uh, fried Oreos? They have fried butter. That just seems wrong. But I'll try it. Amen. So next week, uh, next week, we want to encourage you. Anthony Thomas, he's one of ours. He reps Hope City, but more importantly, he reps Jesus with his Hope City patches. Let's give it up for Anthony Thomas. Come on. I know he might actually be in the room today. Love Anthony. For week number three of Beyond the Blessing, I want to encourage you, if this is your first time or if you've been a part of Hope City for any amount of time, you know the importance of us staying learners. We position ourselves to grow. Statistically, if you've been around, you've heard me say it, but I'm going to say it again because repetition is key. If you're a hearer only, you'll only retain 5%. So the only thing you're going to remember is the bearded wonder said brisket, nachos, and potatoes. Like that's it. That's 5%. But if you take down notes, it goes up to 35% in real time. Take down notes and actually go back and apply it. Your retention rate goes up to 90 to 95%. I want to encourage you to take notes throughout all of the weeks. Elbow somebody, borrow an eyeliner, pull out your iPhone, your droid, whatever you have. For week three of Beyond the Blessing, the title of today's sermon is Clear Out the, Clear out the Clutter. Clear out the clutter. You can write that down. Clear out the clutter. We're going to be talking about a man from First Chronicles named Jabez. Jabez was a man who dared to pray an ad one audacious prayer that we're going to look at today, but we know that he had a prayer life. He had to have had other prayer moments because the audacious prayer that he prays in this moment, and for the sake of the series talking about the blessing, we're going to focus in on that. But Jabez got God's attention, not from a religious standpoint, but you can tell there was a posture from like a son to a father. So we're going to read in First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. God bless the reading of your word today. The Bible says, Jabez cried to the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me. I love that because there's boldness in this. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me, that you would keep me from evil so it might not hurt me. Read this last line with me wherever you're watching from. And God granted his request. Let's pray before we dive deeper today. God, give us ears to hear you, a mind to understand, most importantly, a heart ready to receive. God, our prayer today is that we can pray this type of bold prayer and have a story that says, and God granted my request. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So I love Jabez. Now, I'm coming in hot, y'all. I've had a lot of espresso. All of us have lost an hour of sleep. 
Some run on Jesus and adrenaline. Amen. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of intentionality today that I want you to grab. And some things are stories and some things are fun. Some things are taught. Other things are caught. And I need you to grab some things today because I believe as a church, God wants to take us up to a whole nother level. Look at the person next to you and say a whole nother level. Come on, let them know. So Jabez asked God for four specific things. Number one, he asked God to bless him. Number two, he asked God to enlarge his territory and increase his responsibility. Number three, he prayed that God would be with him, that he would stay close by his side. And number four, he asked God to protect him, to keep him from harm. In this series, we've been going through the purpose and blessing and the reason God chooses to entrust blessings to us. But Jabez is different. As we are reading this, we don't actually see beyond the blessing or find out the legacy that followed his blessing. It's interesting that with Jabez, we see a glimpse of this prayer moment for blessing, but we don't actually see beyond it. When we look at people like Daniel in the Bible or Joshua, Joseph or Abraham in Genesis or Moses in Exodus or even Mary in the Gospels, we see less of a glimpse of their prayer life, but we can clearly see the legacy of the blessing that followed them. I've been studying blessing. We've been going throughout this series. I've been looking at the word blessing, and sometimes there's a misconception when you say the word blessing. People are like, oh, they're going to talk about money. Talk about favor. Oh, they're only going to talk about money. That's an aspect of blessing, but there's so much more to the blessing of God. The blessing of God pours out on his people, and it's often received by a certain type of person. Watch this. The mark of a great man or woman of God is in combination of both audacious faith and diligent obedience. Both audacious faith, bold prayers, and diligent obedience. Because when you're faithful and growing in audacious faith and diligent obedience, listen to me, faithfulness isn't always fun, but I'm telling you, it is always fruitful. Yeah. And so when you are allowing God to develop this audacious faith from a mustard seed moment to where you're praying for somebody in a wheelchair to get up and walk, yeah. there's audacious faith moments that you'll realize, whoa, whoa. I feel my faith growing. I feel like I'm getting stronger. I feel like there's a word in season. I feel like there's a prophetic declaration. When you begin to rise up and you grow in this combination of both audacious faith and diligent obedience, it's a recipe for God to show up. The story of Jabez confirms this in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. The Bible describes him as a man of honor and more honorable than his brothers. So as we read and we look at this, you can see since Jabez's life was mentioned, he must have been a man of considerable integrity. While many of us ask for the blessing, the truth is the blessing actually comes with sometimes a weight, the weight of a blessing. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 48, the Bible tells us to whom much is given, watch this, much is required. Jabez possessed the character to carry. It's a question you should ask yourself. Do I possess the character needed to carry the kind of blessing God wants to provide? Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. No, no, do you? I know this is sobering. Some of you are like, not me. That's what you wrote down. You're like, nope. No, no, ask yourself that question. Do I possess the God foundational character to possess what God wants to and carry what God wants to bless me with Oftentimes as Christians, we pray these bold prayers, but we won't prioritize the life of character. We prioritize, I'm going to pray, I'm going to spend time with God, but our character is flawed. Again, this is not a legalistic issue, this is a holiness issue. Again, this isn't a legalistic issue, this is a righteousness issue. Do you wake up saying, how close to the line can I live without splitting hell wide open, amen. How close to this line can I touch where people know I'm a Christian but don't know I'm a Christian? We pray these bold, prioritized prayers, but the truth is, do we live a life of character in order to walk in true biblical blessing? We have to prioritize both, because here's the truth. You can't stop the blessing of God, but you can block the blessing. You can get in the way, that's called free will. You can get in the well. You can get in the way of what God wants to do out of the wellspring of what he wants to provide. God answers prayers, but are we prepared to receive what he's providing? 
Sometimes in my uh, studying, uh, I have a few different, uh, few different styles. Sometimes I, I talked to you guys about this a few weeks ago. I'll turn on Animal Planet in the background. I don't have any idea why. Just animals running. And uh, I don't know. It's just inspiration. I'm like, look at nature. I don't know. Uh, but this week when we were looking at uh, clearing the clutter, I wanted to look up some stats about storage units. How many of you guys have a storage unit? Like you, you have just too much stuff. So you're like, I low-key need it. No, none of you. This is amazing. Now, how many of y'all, wait a minute, you got a storage unit? Okay. So here's some fun stats. Uh, in America, there is 1.5 billion, with a B, square foot of rentable storage space around America. 1.5 billion. They say 1.5 billion square feet. They say that's over 26,000 football stadiums worth of space. Because we have a lot of extra stuff. Now, I'll be honest, I've got a storage unit, climate controlled. My wife's like, you need to throw out that stuff. And I'm like, nope. If there was a flood in that area and all of it was ruined, I could hardly tell you what's in there other than Wheaties boxes with cereal on it from 1996 with Michael Jordan's face on it, okay? How many guys are low-key hoarders? Come on, wave at me if you like. You're like, I'm not talking about collectors. Some of y'all are collectors. It's a little different. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. But there are some things in there that I could stand to clear out. There's some stuff in there that I would not miss that I could probably throw out. What's interesting is if maybe you're here today and you say, hey, Daniel, Man, I actually wanted to bless you with an entire living room set. I have a storage unit that's climate controlled, that's big enough to hold it, but it's so full, I couldn't even receive it. And a lot of times we live our lives like that. We have a lot of useless clutter, a lot of relationships that are taking up space. Come on, somebody. We've got things in our lives that are muddying the waters of our ability to hear what God is saying in the same way we have these things in our lives where God's like, hey, I've got a blessing placed right in front of you. And when I provide it, the truth is you don't have any room to receive it. So can I be real for a moment? Maybe you've been praying for a spouse, but you haven't fully surrendered a lust problem or an issue that's blinding you from being able to see what is best and what's in front of you. Maybe financially God has been entrusting you or wants to entrust you with more, but because you've lived so close-fisted in your approach to giving and sowing that God's like, hey, I can't bless you with more because you won't even release what's in your hand. And if you won't release what's in your hand, I can't release what's in my hand. Are you prepared to receive it? Whatever it is, receiving God's blessing has to be a combination of both courageous prayers and consistent character. We have to posture ourselves for an outpouring. I really want to be a man like Noah, who have, has audacious faith enough to pray and believe and build a boat before I've ever seen a drop of rain. And the truth is, when increase and opportunity come, it's too late to prepare. When increase and opportunity hits your doorstep, it's too late to prepare or make room so the question is that not will God pour blessings out on me because he will. The question is, will you be the man of God or the woman of God filled with righteousness and character necessary to receive and live in God's blessing? Somebody should say amen or just say out loud if you believe it. I will be. Come on. So what happens, though, because the truth is at some point on the spiritual journey, we may reach this place of awareness where we understand that God places blessing on character. Maybe that realization will happen today, but what happens when we have to come to the realization that there's a few things in our life that have to be cleared out to make room for what God wants to do? I set you up a minute ago and asked if you were low-key hoarders. Anybody else? Anybody in here? Uh, have you ever watched the show Hoarders? Anybody? Man, it overwhelms me. I like have to take a deep breath. I feel like my heart's racing. And I'm not talking about collectors. I'm a little bit of a collector, I'll be honest. My son, Brecken, he's here. He's a collector. We collect things. So I'm not talking about the guy in here that's like, yeah, but that Happy Meal robot 1980s edition toy is going to be worth a fortune in 2065. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. Uh, but here's some signs that you may be a low-key hoarder when someone drives by your house and the blinds are pressed up against the window. <laughs> like the blind is literally crying out. Like there's only so many bobblehead dolls you can put in a room, Right? Uh, or maybe you have so much stuff in an overflow garage that could house a vehicle, but you park your car in the driveway because you have stuff in there you can't even identify that you own. 
You're like, Nancy, I'm telling you, people place things in here. Like, may, may, maybe, that's, maybe that's you. Uh, maybe you uh, have allowed a Precious Moments or Porcelain Doll Collection to spill too much into the rest of the house. Some of you are like, that's very specific. I've experienced this myself at Jackie's mom's house. All right, we're going to talk about this for a Give her mom a hand. She's watching right now. We love her. Margaret, we love you. Your doll collection is creepy. Uh, okay. So, so we were staying there. This is true. We were there, and there's always that one doll that's like this. You know what I'm talking about? You guys know what I'm talking about. And you can't make eye contact with it because you're like, the, the eyes are following me. I'm telling you, the eyes are following me. And it's just like this. Like... But there's useless things that we allow to distract or weigh us down. And the truth is, the thing about the show Hoarders when I've watched it, which is not very often because I get overwhelmed, there's a clutter that they thought would sustain or bring joy to their lives. This clutter has now become a burden and a hindrance to progress. On this show, these people hit a low, all-time low and they have to choose to call on the help of others to help remove what they thought would bring them joy. Our Christian walk is no different. The Bible says in James 5, verse 16, it says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other often so that you may be healed. Why? Because the prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective. In the midst of spiritual clutter, we first have to repent. We have to surround ourselves with brothers and sisters and pull them close into our mess and allow God to work through them to help remove the things that we've allowed to build up in our hearts. This could be a toxic relationship that a friend may has tried to call out before. This could be a situation or an addiction birthed through loneliness. And what was satisfying for a season is now actually the thing that's keeping you isolated. Whatever it is, I want to challenge you today. Quit hoarding it. I want to challenge you today. Position yourself to let go of the things that are weighing you down. That's why we say, don't do life alone. Go through growth track. Join a connect group. Get on the dream team. Join a freedom group. And fully allow God to break off chains so that rooms can be cleared in your heart, your mind, your emotions, in your life. And you're making room for the peace, hope, and joy of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Come on. Because I truly believe that if you'll pursue making Christ-like character, your priority, I believe you'll start seeing the blessings in favor of God in your life daily. But it's that, it's daily. Not religious, it's not a routine. It's a daily, daily posture of God. I wanna grow in relationship with you. Jackie and I talk every day, why? Because our relationship didn't stop the day we got married 17 years ago. It's a daily growing relationship. It's the same thing with God every single day when you choose to live with Christ-like character, and you make that your priority, I'm telling you blessings and favor will follow. So I want, to, I want you to ask yourself this question. Can I be trusted? Just think about this. Can I be trusted with what God wants to bless me with? Can I be trusted with what God wants to bless me with? Luke chapter 16, verse 10 says, whoever, that's us, can be trusted with little, can also be trusted with much. But whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Ask yourself that question. Can God trust me? I remember when Jackie and I, uh, there would be something that God would be stirring in us. And we kind of took the posture like, well, God, one day when you provide and you bless me, if something happens, uh, you know, unexpected increase, God, we're going to sow we commit, and we did. We got together, we prayed, and we said, God, if you'll provide it, because we believe every farmer gets to keep a little seed himself, right? But the truth is, it's not about close-handed. It's an open-handed posture. God's not trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you and through you. So when you live open-handed, you say, God, if you'll bless me, I'll bless others because I know that you'll always fill it back up and that I can bless more and then you'll fill it up and I'll continue to bless more. Whether that's in serving, whether that's in time, talent, or treasure, God, I believe that when I live open-handed, so that was our posture. We don't have any kids. Our bills are a lot lower. God, if you'll bless us, we'll be a blessing. And then unexpected increase came and we're like, hey, Lord, <laughs> uh, maybe next time, <laughs> Uh, I know we said this, and uh, maybe, you, I know you blessed this, but maybe, 
How many guys, let's come on, be honest. How many guys have experienced that? You're like, God, if you'll bless me, I'll bless others. And they bless you. And you're like, (laughs) you have not because you ask not. And I did ask, but uh, no, no, no. We committed to God to be faithful with our word that if God blessed us, we would bless others out of the overflow of that blessing. And you know what? Like a domino effect, we've seen God continue to bless, continue to move because he's looking for people who will just say yes and be willing. Do you? So my question is, are you willing? Blessing is built on character. So when it comes to living a life like Jabez, who we've seen as a man of audacious faith, of honor and character, there's three things I want you to write down that we can take from this verse and we can apply to our own lives. Number one, we have to live a surrendered life. We have to live a surrendered life. This is getting your yes out of the way every day. This is waking up and looking in the mirror and saying, God, I want to be more mindful of your agenda, not my own. God, if you'll trust me to say it, I'll say it. If you trust me to give it away, I'll give it. If you ask me to show up and be present and serve, I'll show up. I get my yes out of the way because people matter to you, so they matter to me. So to live a surrender life is a posture where you go in a position of who you are and whose you are. Jabez said, oh Lord, that you would bless me. He didn't say, hey God, um, not sure if you remember me, Jabez. And God's like, Jabin? No, it's Jabez. It's different. Boaz? No, that's another guy. Uh, Jabez. No, no, he had a relationship. And out of the overflow of his surrender, God granted his request. Number two, y'all, we have to learn to pray audacious prayers. We talk a lot about everything that's happening around us because there's a lot happening around us. Inflation, gas prices, Russia, Ukraine. Everything surrounding us feels chaotic and heavy. And so instead of talking about how big our problems are as a church and as individuals, we have to start praying God-sized prayers and start talking to our problems about how big our God is. Audacious prayers that says, my God is bigger than cancer. Audacious prayers that say, my God is bigger than an addiction. Audacious prayers that say, my God is bigger than generational struggles. My God is big enough to heal families. My God is big enough to provide all that I can ask or think. Are we praying audacious prayers? Number three, we have, to be, we have to steward for future seasons. We have to steward for future seasons. I can speak on behalf of Hope City. That's what we do. We've given away over $8 million to local and global missions. We're reaching people in neighborhoods to nations. That's okay. You can clap. We're seeing people literally all over the world. We've got Cinco Woodlands. We've got our online location. And we're not stopped there, y'all. There is no lid to what God is about to do and through Hope City. Because what he started, he's faithful to complete. From the silos to other projects, what God is going to do here and what he's already started, we're being a good steward for future seasons. God is asking of you. And Jabez is saying, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my influence. Show up, God, and I'm telling you, if you'll show up and you'll answer my prayer, I'll be a good steward for now and also for future seasons. And it says God answered his request. I believe if we can find this rhythm as the people of God, these walls here at Hope City and all of our campuses and those meeting around the world, these walls will not be able to contain the story of blessings and miracles and fruit that come from within it. God is always placing miracles in our path. He's just looking for pure, righteous vessels filled with the Holy Spirit, walking in confidence and conviction, knowing that God's by our side. I told this in the last service. Maybe you've heard me tell this story before, but I was reminded of a story of a little boy who was being bullied. He went to his mom and dad. His mom took the, well, avoid him, honey. Just stay away from him. He said, mom, there's more than one. There's like three now. Well, just stay away from him. Kill him with kindness. Just be really kind to him. He's like, you don't understand, mom. They're picking on me. They're taking my lunch. I haven't been eating. She's, and the dad walked in and said, let me tell you what you do. You go lean up against the wall, a brick wall. Never let him come behind you. You're going to put your foot against the wall. You're going to jump off that wall. You're going to elbow him. Mom's like, okay, okay, take it easy. Take it easy. And dad's talking about this. And so he's listening to mom be kind. He's listening to dad like, hey, don't get picked on. Punch him really hard and run. So he showed up. He was pretty bold. He showed up. His dad said, listen, Exodus 14, 14, the Lord is fighting for you. God's about to show up for you, and there's boldness that's about to 
come overshadow you. And I'm telling you, when you show up to school again, there's going to be a different confidence on you. Even though in stature you feel small, there's a big God in you. Amen. That's good. That's a good, that's a great dad. Awesome. So he shows up and these three dudes expand it to five. And he's like, okay, there's a big God in me. There's a big God in me. And he's like, you know what? You're not going to mess with me today. And they were like, really? Bro, there's five of us against you. Give up your bag. What's in there? You got snacks. You got Laffy Taffy. What's in there? Help us out. And all of a sudden, the, the ringleader, the main guy goes, hey, hey, hey. You know what? We don't want any trouble. And they start to back off. So he takes his bag. He's like, yeah. You know what? You're not going to mess with me anymore. And he's getting even bolder. And he's, he's getting even stronger. They're like, okay, dude, we don't want any trouble. And he's like, yeah, this is exactly what my dad said. And he turned around and there was a way bigger kid behind him. And he's like, oh, come on, man. Are you with these guys? Like, I'm already outnumbered five to one. And this dude just ignores the little guy and says, hey, you leave my buddy alone. He's with me. My name's Big Cheese. Come on, how many of y'all know we need a Big Cheese? We need, we need somebody with a self-proclaimed nickname. But his dad had prayed with him and said, you're going to have somebody come along your side. You're going to have somebody that befriends you. You're going to have somebody that's provided, that's going to be your friend. You know, Big Cheese ended up his elementary buddy, his junior high buddy, his high school buddy. And that kid never was afraid again because he knew he had Big Cheese. Y'all know we have a big God that is big and faithful and strong. And so when you're dealing with something that you know would overtake you in the natural, you can say, hey, diagnosis, wait a minute. I got a big God backing me. Hey, situation financially, I know it looks bleak, but I have a big God backing me. Whatever it looks like, all the hell that's happening around us there's no match for the heaven that's inside of us and the wave and the breath of heaven and God that's backing us. We have to know that God is on our side. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 says, Roll your works, I love this, upon the Lord. Commit and trust wholly to him, and he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be, watch this, established and succeed. Here's my prayer. This is my personal prayer. I, I want to be, as a father, as a husband, as a son, and as a brother, I want to be a man who clears the storage unit before the prayers even leave my mouth. I, I want to be a man who knows who God is. I can feel the Spirit of God in this room. Y'all may want to stand to your feet just for a moment and get prepared at Cinco at Woodlands here at West Houston. We're going to dive back in and we're going to worship in a moment. I want to be a man like Joseph who sees the potential in the depths of a prison. I, I want to be a man like Daniel who sees a lion as a pillow because surely the Lord will shut the mouth of my enemies. I, I want to be a man like Caleb shouting that my God will surely deliver the promised land. I want to be a man like Joshua who marches around the walls of Jericho and believes they're going to fall even before the crack begins to form. We want to see women in our church like Mary who when God says it, they steward it. We want to see women like Ruth who see a moment of God's salvation and acts. We want to see children who walk up to a savior and say, I have fish and loaves. Is there enough with my childlike faith to feed a multitude? We wanna see elderly like Abraham and Sarah who will shout that there's new life coming from old bones. Come on, Hope City, we will see a church covered in righteousness, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, discerning with wisdom, speaking with prophetic insight, casting out demons, seeing the broken restored. Come on, the rejected accepted, acting as a beacon of hope to a city that feels surrounded by darkness. And God, our prayer is that we will be a church that looks like Jesus, that loves people that are overlooked. God, a church that knows you, that truly finds freedom, a church that really discovers their purpose so that we can make a difference from neighborhoods to nations because that is the key. So God, today we clear room in our minds, our emotions, in our hearts, in our lives, in our spirit. We clear room for what you want to do in our lives. Can you lift your hands towards heaven as a posture of surrender? 
And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to Come on, I feel God in this place. Say, I will make room for you Come on, at Cinco at Woodlands at home by yourself at your house party. To do whatever you want to. Whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Come on, even bolder. Come on, say. And I will make room for you. Oh. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. I will make. I will make room. To do whatever you Come want. Come on, unify as a church family. To Come on, can we make room? Say, we will make room. We will make room. We will make room for you. To do whatever you want to. Jesus, to do whatever you want to. Come on, even more. We will make room. We will make room for you. To do whatever you want. today you say Daniel I'm desperate for a blessing I, I, I want what you're talking about my response to you in order to receive this blessing is you have to know the blesser you have to know the one that was sent that hung on a cross for your life even though you feel overlooked and undervalued, maybe even damaged goods here at West Houston at Cinco at Woodlands, our house parties, those watching online. I want to give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. Because in, until you fully surrender your life to Jesus, you'll never fully be able to walk in what God has for you. You'll never fully be able to pray those bold, audacious prayers, steward for future seasons. The foundation of all of it is Jesus. And here at Hope City, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, we, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray because it says to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. I'm going to count to three. If you're here and you say, Daniel, one, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to. Today's my day. I want to live a surrendered life. Two, I, I fell away. I've been caught up in the prodigal life. I've been living for me. I got caught up in the mess of choosing me over Christ. But today I want to rededicate when I hit three at Cinco at Woodlands. Online, you can type yes to Jesus. Our team, our moderators will help you at West Houston. When I hit three, I want you to lift up your hand with boldness and you say, today is my day. I want my life to go beyond 
the blessing. I want to be who I'm called to be. I want to truly know God. I want to truly find freedom. I want to discover my purpose and I want to make a difference. I want to finally live in the flourishing of what God has called me. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. Hand, 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 hand. Just leave it up, leave it up, leave it up. Hands all over West Houston. I know it's Cinco at Woodlands. Hands are everywhere, everywhere. Keep them up, keep them up. God, I thank you for the boldness of every person that's making the declaration today to surrender. You can put your hands down. As a church family and at home right now watching online and at every campus, can you pray this prayer with me? Say, Jesus, It's me. Come on, every person, it's me. I've been living for me, and it's just not working. From today on, I choose to live for you. I repent of every struggle, every mishap, and all my sins, and I ask for your forgiveness. From today on, I choose to live for you because you are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise? Now come on, praise Him. A bunch of hands went up. It was incredible. Let's go.